Hello everyone. I uh, hope everyone's doing good today. Uh, we're going to be doing an installation video for our truck since we use that mostly for our travel. If you're watching this video, you're probably searching the affordable way of doing a dual battery setup. So this is going to be our way of doing it. It's actually not that much. We'll have the links to all the products that we're going to discuss in the video. Now there are more expensive kits out there, you know, companies and stuff, but we got everything that we have here from Amazon. It's affordable. So if you're on a budget, then then this is part of the way you want to go. So for the first part of the kit is the auxiliary battery. What we did, we went with uh, Blue Top Optima battery. Now some people like Optima batteries, some people don't. We've had really good luck with the Optima batteries we've used. Our starter battery is currently a yellow top. The reason why we went with the blue Optima battery is because it's got these extra terminals. Later down the road, we're gonna install the S-Pod, which is a junction box for all the other components. So it's just gonna make it easier for to wire up things that we want constant battery power to. Uh, second item is gonna be our battery isolator. Excuse the dogs, guys. <laughs> yeah. I think the neighbor has a party. <laughs> So we have the battery isolator itself. Now we're not sponsored by any of these products, by the way, just a disclaimer. We pay, pay this with our own money. There's the key line instruction book. This is the actual isolator. So you can see you got the terminals there. It's got your secondary battery there and your main battery there. So we'll, we'll go through this together. I'm wiring it up. Comes with some battery terminals. We got electrical wire and some terminals mm -hmm. and heat shrink and a lot of and then we got zip ties, zip ties which we love zip ties and then we got a round wire so we're going to figure out where we're going to mount it and then we're going to do that for the chevy Silverado guys they have or gals uh, they have a Chevy Silverado that's from 2014 to 2018. We have a second battery tray right here. So we're kind of lucky. Um, Jeep guys and other uh, off-road vehicles, things like that, they have to get certain kits so they can fit in there. But lucky for us, we have plenty of room. Yeah. So obviously we're going to put our battery here. And this wiring right here is for our behind the grill LED light, light bar uh, that we have to hook up. So obviously the battery's gonna go here. And then over there where the starter battery is, uh, that's where we're gonna mount the battery oscillator around that area. And then we gotta run the wires here to there. Okay. And we're gonna have to get a tie down for it. All right, so the first step is gonna to be to remove the, the negative ground to the starter battery so you don't get electrocuted or fry anything. This is for the battery oscillator. Okay. So this is the one that's gonna actually oscillate the battery when you uh, turn a vehicle off. Mm -hmm. When you turn a vehicle on and it's running, then it's gonna be charging uh, both batteries. So oh. the starter battery and what we call it, like Siri battery, house battery, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. This is the battery oscillator. This is what makes the magic happen. All right, so we're gonna, we mark these holes. Now we don't know if this is gonna be the permanent location, but for right now it's gonna be good. Yeah. So our plan is to drill the two holes that we marked here. It is a 964 drill bit or 3.5 millimeter drill bit. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we're just gonna drill the two holes here. Uh, clean the area real good, prep it real good, and use a double-sided tape. I'm just gonna put this in place for now. And there we have to go back and then, because I gotta take one of these out and use the long screw that actually goes through the top plate. Mm -hmm. And then on this corner, I'm gonna have to use like a, uh, like a bolt. To bolt it down. Yeah, it's got the 3M tape behind it. So it should stay in place. So I'm gonna let it hold in place while I uh, break over the notches on the, uh, the the main part. 
if you can look right here on the sides, they got little places where you can cut the notches so you can run your wire through. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but right here, kind of get the little hoops. All right, so we got to cut, like I said before, we got to cut these notches. Okay. All right, so see, I cut the notch here. So we put the power wires right here. And you attach it to the case or to the back or to the mountain. When you attach it to the mountain plate, then you uh, have a place to run your wires. See. All right, so before we mount the, the battery oscillator here, what I'm gonna do, we get the power cable here. What I gotta do is go to auxiliary battery, which is over that way. And then we're gonna run it, you know, run it through here and pretty much zip tie it to the uh, wire loom here. Mm -hmm. And then get it to right here. And then that way we know how much of this we actually need. Cause then we have to have the rest of the power wire from here to here. Do, do, do. Special tool. That should be good. Got I love the uh, fire trucks going off and the Please sirens, but we both preferably would love to live in the mountains. Yep. Alright, so Maria just got done stripping the wire for me because she likes doing this stuff. And we don't have the huge wire strippers <laughs> that you're supposed to use on this gauge of wire, but we will show you what we did use. First, we used the, wire, the razor blade, the razor knife. Then we use this one. And then that's definitely not made for this gauge of wiring, but it worked. It helped. And the diagonal cutter. And diagonal cutters. <laughs> yep. But it worked. Yep. And that's all that matters. It took probably three times as long as it would have if we had the right tools. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is that it, we made it work. So we got it. Got it finally crimped on. Right now, we're just gonna use a heat gun and let the heat shrink shrink, mm -hmm. just do its job. That's good. That's good? Mm -hmm. Okay. That is good. So this right here is gonna go right here. Then we're gonna run another cable from here to the starter motor, or to the starter battery. Okay. So that's how that's gonna work. So the starter battery, this one, we're gonna put it here. So let me show you this tight. Okay, it's good. So this one. Okay. So we got both positive battery cables on there. So I'm just gonna pop this on where it goes. So we got the positive to the starter battery hooked up. Positive wire hooked up both uh, positive wire wires from the both batteries hooked up to the oscillator. Um, now we have the little black wire at the bottom to the oscillator. This is going to be the ground wire. So they gave us a terminal uh, here. So we got to put the terminal on, terminal on, crimp it, and then find a bolt like a grounding bolt. Um, something that goes to the uh, truck itself, so it creates a good ground. If you follow it down, I found a bolt down here, or, or a nut and a stud to ground it to. Down here, as you can see. And you yeah. see right there. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it there. I don't know if I'm going to keep it there or not, but for now that's good. Um, we got to zip tie this back nice and tight. And then... Put the uh, ground wire on the, uh, the auxiliary battery. 
It's just that one there. And then after that, we'll uh, put the ground on here and the cycle should be com complete. Mm -hmm. So let's do the, uh, let's clean this up and let's get the ground wire, put on the auxiliary battery. All right, so for the ground, I, I end up um, just uh, drilling a hole, uh, sanded it down to the bare metal, and then I uh, use a, a bolt and nut from my stash. So now that's grounded good to the truck, we're gonna put on the, uh, the battery. So it's live now. Okay. So that's all good, this is good. All the wires are tidied up, so the only thing left now is to actually plug, uh, hook up the ground to the main battery, the starter battery. The light is on now. It's 12 volts. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So right now that means it's charging both batteries. The alternator, the alternator is charging both batteries. So cool, you know, like two, two batteries. Okay. So now when we get like a, when we get a fridge, uh, we hook up our winch and all that. We have, we're gonna have the S pod, so everything's gonna be hooked up to the S pod, it's gonna be hooked up to the auxiliary battery. So that's the main reason why we're doing it, because we want to go like on extended long trips. Yeah. So. Uh, ice chest will only take you so far, <laughs> so eventually we're going to get like a, you know, fridge. Fridge, and, travel fridge. And then, you know, the winch, you know, it kind of like uses a lot of battery along with the, the off-road lights and stuff like that, so. Alright, so I'm going to give you a recap of what we did today. We put the Optima battery, which is going to be our auxiliary battery. That's going to run our winch, light bars, all that stuff. Uh, and then we installed the dual battery oscillator. Uh, we ran the wires. It's actually pretty, it's a pretty simple installation. Uh, it took us probably four times longer because we, we filmed everything. But hopefully this video helps you out if you're like wanting to do the same thing. This is on a 2016 Chevy Silverado. And as far as the battery goes, you can pick whatever battery you want to. I would recommend at least the AGM battery, brand of your preference. And, or a or a lithium battery. They all have their pros and cons. It just depends on like what you want them for and what you're gonna be uh, hooked up to for. But overall, really easy installation. Uh, really excited because now that's the first step of uh, installing the rest of the things that we have for the truck. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Until next time, thank you and God bless. Ciao.